The Insane True Story of John Gambino John Gambino's insane true story. An Italian-born American mobster entangled in an international heroin trafficking web, facing arrest, surviving strokes, and heart attacks in prison. But wait, there's more. Details of his life were from intimate contacts with an Italian financier to organizing a daring bogus kidnapping. So, join us as we learn how he ran the renowned Gambino family, collaborated with other prominent criminal figures, and survived a roller coaster of legal fights. Giovanni John Gambino, an Italian-born American mobster, was born on August 22, 1940, in Palermo, Sicily. He had quite a journey as he became a made member of the notorious Gambino crime family back in 1975. But wait, it doesn't stop there. John's reputation and skills were so impressive that he was eventually promoted to a capo de Sina, or captain, within the crime family. And get this, he even became the head of the family's Sicilian faction. The Gambino brothers, John, Rosario, or Sal, and Giuseppe, or Joseph. Together, they formed a faction within the crime family, earning the nickname Cherry Hill Gambinos because they operated from the town of Cherry Hill in New Jersey. Interestingly, these guys were actually distant cousins of the family's boss, Carlo Gambino, but they didn't owe him any allegiance. Originating from Palermo, Sicily, their father brought the Gambino family to New York in 1964. The brothers were authentic Sicilian mafiosi with roots in the Paso di Reggiano neighborhood in Palermo, just like the Inzerillo clan led by Salvatore Inzerillo. What's really fascinating is that the Inzerillo Gambino mafia clan became a powerful transatlantic mafia family, having a presence both in Palermo and New York. Now, here's an intriguing story. During the Second Mafia War, in Sicily, the Inzerillo clan faced a dire situation and was almost wiped out by Toto Riina and the Corleonesi. But thanks to the intervention of the Gambino crime family in New York, a deal was struck to save the surviving Inzerillos. The agreement allowed them to seek refuge in the U.S., but it came with a condition. Neither they nor their descendants could ever return to Sicily. As a result, many of the Inzerillos sought shelter in the New York area, and they joined forces with the Gambino family earning themselves the nickname Gli Scapati, or the Escapees. Despite drug dealing being strictly banned, they had their hands deep in international heroin trafficking, right out of Bensonhurst. John Gambino played a crucial role in the United States, acting as the hub for a consortium of heroin traffickers associated with the Sicilian Mafia. The consortium included the Inzerillo family and Stefano Bontade, and John Gambino served as the final destination for their shipments of heroin. The heroin was refined in laboratories in Sicily, originating from a Turkish morphine base. One of John's relatives, Salvatore Inzerillo, played a prominent role in this operation. He was the principal interlocutor for the Gambino brothers and a central figure in Sicily, involved in numerous interests and substantial capital investments. The scale of their operation was mind-boggling. In the late 1970s, the Inzerillo Gambino Spatola network was estimated to smuggle a staggering six hundred million dollars worth of heroin into the United States annually. The investigation into this heroin trafficking case was taken up by the diligent Giovanni Falcone, an investigating magistrate. With such high stakes and the involvement of powerful organized crime groups, it was undoubtedly a challenging task for Falcone and his team. The ties between John Gambino and the Italian banker Michele Sindona were truly something else. They had a close relationship and would often be seen whining and dining at fancy spots like the luxurious Hotel Pierre on 5th Avenue or the Gambino's Café Valentino. They even attended New York dinner parties in honor of Sindona, quite the high-profile gatherings, I must say. Now, things took a twist when Sindona got into trouble and faced indictment for the bankruptcy of the Franklin National Bank. In an attempt to help his friend, John Gambino hatched a daring plan. He procured a false passport and orchestrated a bogus kidnapping in August 1979, all to cover up Sindona's mysterious 11-week trip to Sicily ahead of his scheduled fraud trial. Sindona's financial malpractices had also put the Mafia's heroin money at risk. So, while the kidnapping appeared to be about rescuing Sindona's banks, the real motive was to issue disguised blackmail notes to his past political allies, including Prime Minister Giulio Andriotti, to secure the recovery of Cosa Nostra's money. 
Gambino was right there with Sindona, accompanying him in his attempt to retrieve the money. Unfortunately, the plan fell apart, and Sindona was arrested, leading to the indictment of the Inzerillo Spatola Gambino network. It's unclear whether they managed to recover any of the lost mafia money. As if that wasn't enough, John Gambino faced his own legal troubles. He was indicted in 1980 in connection with the heroin trafficking network. Ultimately, he was convicted and sentenced to six and a half years in jail for heroin trafficking in Palermo. However, he managed to remain a free man because the U.S. didn't agree to extradite him to Italy. On another note, John and Joe Gambino were acquitted in a 1984 drug case in New Jersey, while their brother, Rosario, unfortunately, received a 45-year prison sentence. In December 1988, a major operation called Operation Iron Tower was launched by Italian and U.S. law enforcement to crack down on the gambino Inzerillo network once again. This extensive operation resulted in the indictment of around 200 defendants in both Italy and the U.S. on on drug trafficking charges. Among those arrested was Joe Gambino, who owned Cafe Giardino, a popular spot where a crowd of about 100 had gathered to enjoy the performance of an Italian singer. As the entertainment ended, federal agents made their move, with one agent playfully announcing, this is your last day. Some thought it was a joke, but soon realized the seriousness when arrests were made. John Gambino, however, managed to evade charges as the FBI couldn't gather enough evidence against him. Nevertheless, he was identified in the court affidavit as the current leader of the Brooklyn-based Sicilian faction of the Gambino family. Though initially released after the first indictments in 1988 and 1989, John Gambino found himself under arrest on January 4, 1990. He faced a superseding indictment, including charges of narcotics and racketeering violations. However, he was released on a $2 million personal recognizance bond signed by his wife Vittoria Gambino and his son Tommy Gambino the next day. Testimonies from mafia informants like Sammy Gravano and Francesco Marino Manoia led to further indictments against Joe and John Gambino, along with six others, for drug smuggling, organized crime operations, and their alleged involvement in the murder of Francisco Oliveri in 1988. Surprisingly, the brothers failed to appear at their arraignment on September 1, 1992, at the Federal District Court in Manhattan, and they fortified a hefty $5 million bail. It was discovered that their electronic monitoring bracelets, intended to track them, had been removed with the government's approval earlier that year. In 1992, John and Joe Gambino were arrested at a secluded motel suite in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where they planned to escape to Venezuela. They were accused of being key heroin distributors for the Sicilian Mafia, smuggling drugs from Italy and South America to Miami and New York. The trial, which started in February 1993, involved testimonies from witnesses like Marine Manoia and Sammy Gravano. However, the trial ended in a mistrial as the jury couldn't agree on charges of racketeering, drug trafficking, and murder. Marino Manoia's testimony eventually led the Gambino brothers to plead guilty to drug trafficking in an agreement with the prosecution. In June 1994, the Gambino brothers, John and Joe, faced the prosecutor's recommendation of 15-year sentences without the possibility of parole. Faced with the weight of the evidence against them and the severe of the potential punishment, they decided to enter guilty pleas. Their guilty pleas were related to racketeering charges, covering their activities from 1975 to 1992. During this time, the Pentito Gaspar Mutolo came forward with some damning information. He revealed that in 1981, he organized a massive shipment of 400 kilograms of heroin to the United States. In this operation, the Contrera Caruana Mafia clan received half of the heroin load, while John Gambino took possession of the other 200 kilograms. The shipment was financed by a consortium of Sicilian Mafia clans who formed a pool to gather the necessary funds to purchase the heroin from Thai suppliers. After surviving numerous health issues in prison, including a stroke and heart attacks, John Gambino was released in October 2005, but faced an extradition request from Italy. 
He was later released on bail. In September 2006, a federal judge ruled in his favor, preventing his extradition to Italy, stating that he had already served a 15-year sentence in the U.S. for drug trafficking and murder and couldn't be tried again for the same charges in Italy. Court documents revealed that John Gambino was part of a three-man panel running the Gambino family with Daniel Marino and Bartolomeo Bobby Vernace. His life came to an end on November 16, 2017, when he passed away from natural causes in New York. His life was marked by a series of ups and downs, and he remained a prominent figure in the world of organized crime until his final days. That's all for the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more insane stories.